What's up, guys? Welcome back. We are continuing our journey down the political rabbit hole, uh, especially when it comes to Trump, because as everyone now knows, he was there was an attempt on his life. Um, and it's getting closer and closer to November. And with all of this stuff happening, it's really important to make sure we have all the information we need to make the best possible choice and make our voices heard at the ballot box rather than, uh, you know, with pew pews. So uh, pew -pews. that being said, uh, me and uh, Mel or Deadhead are, are pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty pro Trump for the most part, uh, I would say like. I, I know what I want. I would say we're, I think is best, we're just so, set on where we or where I'm pro stand. I'm pro I need the I'm pro economy. I need my economy back. Mm -hmm. Dang it. Uh but uh but Carol has definitely had a distaste for Trump, which is perfectly fine because but she is trying to just kind of get more knowledge uh about some of the things he did during his presidency to help her make the best possible decision come november um and i love this video this was when i was kind of going through my own trump journey of sorts this is when i found and i really loved what larry elder had to say about the stuff that trump had done and i loved the policies trump had done uh in this video uh which made me support him that much more so i wanted to share it with carol in hopes to get her opinion on what what maybe if maybe that'll help her i don't know see trump in a slightly different light maybe yeah. who knows she might still think yes <laughs> yeah i really do have a very bad distaste for trump um i've never, yeah. I've never hidden it being on the channel nope. um and the girls love me anyways guys that's how people can still get along i know not, it's like, possible not, yes it's possible because i'm very much a there you know yeah fuck that guy you know and <laughs> Um, but I, I'm trying to understand, um, cause there's been something, you know, before I was explaining in a previous video. Um, so if you guys, you know, go watch some of our other videos this week, or I'm not sure which one will go out first, but, um, <clears throat> understand that before I couldn't even stand to listen to this man speak yeah. at all, like could not listen to him speak. And I actually messaged deadhead and was like, uh, I'm at the laundry mat. And uh, I'm watching Trump. He's live. And she, she's kind of like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just trying to, like, understand, right? So, right. Um, and one of the things that always bothered me was, is Trump really a racist, right? Is he really a lot of those things that people say? Um, I've always been left-leaning for a lot of my life. Um, so, just there's some things that have been happening on the left that are far left or extreme or too progressive for me and not not necessarily in my wheelhouse so i have been trying to educate myself um so let me hear what uh mr larry elder has to say about donald trump and uh black americans I i'm very curious okay i'm excited for this uh just i don't know <laughs> it, it made me see him a little bit differently so maybe it'll i don't know all right yeah right. earn him a little a little cool point back yeah. yeah, I've never seen this, so this is new to me too. So. Yeah, do y'all have do y'all know who Larry Elder is? No. Have y'all heard of him before or anything? Um, I, I I've seen him maybe here and there, but don't really know who he is. Okay, I really I really love him. He's very entertaining, but he's he's very smart, and I really respect him. So uh, I don't know. I I hope y'all enjoy this as much as I did. All right, all right. Here we go. It is beyond dispute, right? Water is wet, sky is blue. <laughs> Donald Trump is a card carrying, bona fide racist. Right? <laughs> the president yes. of the United States <laughs> is a racist. His own words leave absolutely no doubt about that. What he is saying is not racially charged. It is flat out racist. And this, of course, makes his supporters racist, right? But for people who look like me, other minorities, women who have been, well, let's just leave this to race. This president has said and done so many insensitive and bigoted and racist things that if you support for him, you, if you support him, people like me want to understand why you ignored so much. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> Homophobic, xenophobic, Islamic. 
Islamophobic, you name it. But, but, but black unemployment, historical lows. I think the economy is doing absolutely great, and it's particularly reaching into populations that heretofore have had very bad problems in terms of jobs, employment, and the opportunities that come with full employment. So African-American unemployment is at its lowest level. I give uh, President Trump, and I've said this before on Squawk Box, I give President a lot of credit for moving the economy in a positive direction that's benefiting a, a, a large number of Americans. Yeah, but he's still a racist. The problem here is that the president has unfortunately used language in the past uh, that will, we will have a lot of difficulty in, in erasing, uh, even with uh, an eraser, uh, with the, the words uh, 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 unemployment drop. Uh, because I, I think some harsh and painful words are, are just kind of hanging out here uh, across the country uh, as it relates to African-Americans and some but other do, minorities. Do and what about it? the First Step Act? Mm -hmm. Okay, but what were the comments? Exactly. Like, that's what that's but what I need. The comments well, were stuff that weren't actually true is the problem. Yeah, that's like, the problem. Good, like, find people on both sides, which has been debunked more times than I can count. Uh, because he said, he, he, in reference to uh, the Charlottesville, like the people, he said, you had good people on both sides. And they just cut it off there, making it sound like he was talking about like the white nationalists or this, you know, white supremacists and stuff. But he literally says in the same breath, in the same sentence, and I'm not talking about the white nationalists or the neo Nazis. I think they should be condemned totally. And so they just leave out parts of that. And so it makes it sound bad when it wasn't actually bad, if that makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah, but and 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 so, but here's something else that I wanted to bring up though, and this was just recent when yeah. he during the debate actually he uh -huh. said um, he was talking about immigrants and he said something about taking black jobs. So what is consent? What is, what is black jobs mean? Right? Is it like supposed to be like? It's, you know, is, is it like the bottom of the phone pole? Like people don't really want those. So that no, 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 no. He no. literally like, means he black needed? people's jobs. He's yeah. taking he's not black people's about, jobs in those areas. Yeah, like, he's, he's not literally he's taking. He's not saying and that, they are. Yeah, he's not saying that some jobs are for black people. That's not what he's saying. No. He's saying that people that are black working, I'm not taking your jobs away. You yeah. know, because black unemployment that's what was he's been accused at an all time of. low. Because there was like a situation, just for an example, like. Uh, so there was an uh, with Tyson Chicken, they had fired American workers and were hiring asylum seekers instead, aka illegal immigrants. So they actually fired Americans and they're paying these other people less money. And so, right. like, but he's actually like in it, like, um, so it, it's just one of those things, you know, who, uh, Somebody, I just watched somebody else do. I want to say it was the, uh, the twins, the conservative twins, maybe. They just did a video on this. Um, but he's just talking about literally like those people are taking black jobs, like, <laughs> black jo jobs away from black people. But why couldn't? What? But why did it have to be specifically black? That's where it gets weird. Because for me. that's where. Like, because that's the what. That's what he's being accused of. So he had to put it out there. He's accused of taking black people's jobs. He's accused of uh, being a racist. So he's putting it out there that he's not. This is what he wants to do because people oh, have well, put, pushed his, took his arm and twisted it that yeah, way. But, no, no, no. I, well, I don't, I don't, I think he was literally speaking in a literal sense of like in specific areas. Um, and it like the higher populations of black people tend to be in the areas where these immigrants are taking these jobs. For the most part like but he wasn't because saying like there was only certain jobs belong to certain black people or certain people yeah because if we're talking about we're like, talking about black jobs i mean black people are in the, like primarily in sports you know what i mean okay like they so, in the nba and stuff so but coming from like here's that little devil's advocate part of me right like that I think I understand maybe like what he was trying to portray, right. but how it comes out, right? So how it's interpreted. And when I look at that, 
I'm like, okay, when we're talking about immigrants and the, the taking black jobs, right? Because we're specifically using the word black, like black people. So taking black jobs, but a lot of the immigrants are getting like a, what I would call like more of your, <clears throat> I don't want to use the word like degrading, but like not as um, financially secure or bigger jobs, yeah. right? Lower in so, lower income creating jobs, yes, basically. Yes, yes, yes. So, so then that is portrayed that, that that is what black people belong is in those jobs, right? Th like that's where that would be. No, I think, well, I feel like that's projecting because he never even said, he never said like, it, it wasn't even about that. It was just saying that these illegal immigrants are literally taking people's jobs, but they are specifically affecting black people more. It, it's not his fault that that might be the statistic that black people are in those jobs. That just might be right. how it is, but it shouldn't be that way. And he was trying to fix it with his opportunity zones and mm -hmm. stuff we're about to get into with the First Step Act and then bringing back the Second Chance Act um, or reinstating it. But uh, but I, I just like it's one of those things like like when people people want to talk about like we shouldn't say black on black crime when it comes to caring about black lives because that's not a good argument because white people kill white people and stuff like that. But black people kill black other black people at a much higher rate than anyone else. You know what I mean? It's still what? a problem. It might not be the only problem, no, because but it is a problem. Most of your serial you, killers are it's white. It's not the people. <laughs> it's not the people. It's the, the way they're forced to live and the way they're forced because they don't have the same opportunities as other people. <laughs> and if they did, it would be a lot different. But and I, I could go on and on and on about where this started. And it started with Linda B. Johnson and welfare. And that's something we are definitely going to have to get into because, like, I think I could blow your minds with that. But um, like, I've been on this journey a long time. I've been trying to figure this shit out. But I don't think he was meaning it in a malicious way. But he is trying to tell people that these illegal immigrants that are coming here are, one, not all good people. These are not just people seeking a better life. And they're not just Mexicans either. There are a lot of different ethnicities coming over the border. Um, and not all of them good with good intentions. But they are taking jobs. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what race jobs are taking, that's the biggest issue is that they are taking jobs. And they're taking up, they're getting free everything. They're getting free housing. They're getting free food. They're getting free phones. They're getting all this free stuff that no other Americans are getting. Especially like these in like, Think about the people who are on welfare and who can only make a certain amount of money or they don't get the same amount of like support that they need. They're barely getting by too, but these illegal, illegal immigrants are coming in here and they're taking the jobs that they do have because they're taking less pay, but they also are um, like creating crime. The crime is going up as well, you know? And it's just, yeah. it's the bigger issue. I don't, I think people want to harp on the fact that he said black jobs and maybe, and maybe he shouldn't have said that, but I'd have to see it again in the whole context because I haven't seen the whole speech. So oh. I'd need to see the entire thing together to be more accurate because I only right. saw a clip of this from, like I said, I can't, I think it might've been the conservative twins. I'm not sure. Well, do you think uh, back, think back to 2020, <laughs> whenever he said uh, he was calling the virus, a China virus, you know? He doesn't mean he's not trying to be yeah. like he's that's literally where it came from. Like, he, he, well, and it's so funny. Okay. I just watched another video on a guy from who is Korean was addressing the because he said the Kung flu mm -hmm. and he was talking about <laughs> why some people were offended and why he him and the people he knew like would have laughed about it. It's like I'm gonna have that's a whole other video. But like, yeah, it could be like inflammatory language, I suppose. But at the same time, like it came from China. Yeah. Like it literally okay. came from Wuhan, yeah. China. You know what? And you know, it was so funny. It's like when, sh when Trump would call it the Chinese virus, right? China. And, um, he would it call came it from China. Chi he would call it the Chinese vir virus. And, you know, I always, I never really got upset about that because yeah. I was like, okay, uh, honestly, he's just so calling a spade China. a spade, right? <laughs> well, like he's just calling was, a spade yeah. a spade. Like, yeah. like that's all that was. And I don't even like the guy and I would defend yeah. it like, all right guys seriously it's just him calling a spade a spade yeah like let's let's not read too much into that yeah um the problem it is though is that it did cause backlash for chinese americans so and they did have issues in well, america him calling it that or the what was it was it actually him calling it that or was it the fact that it actually came from china and people were upset about it 
I think it, I think that it's probably both, right? I think that people were upset about it, but then that's well, like why they, that buyer. Yeah, well, I mean, you call it the China virus, but how does that necessarily, that doesn't say go out and beat up Chinese people. You right. know what I mean? It's just no. saying, because everybody knew it, it was from China. I mean, we or at that time, I guess we were like, we were speculating, but we were pretty sure we knew where it came from. The one that said the coronavirus lab in Wuhan, China, China uh, where it also started <laughs> at. Uh, but... It, like to me i just i don't see that as being inflammatory because like i think a lot of people were saying it i think they were more upset more upset about the fact that it came from china and it seemed like it was like a planned thing that because yeah, at that time we didn't know what was going on that, but yeah. yeah and so i think those i think i think it was in it was inflaming itself and i mean i you you could argue definitely that maybe it didn't help the situation but because uh, it didn't necessarily stop it. But uh, but nobody like I mean, and ah man, we just have so many dumb people in the world because it has nothing to do with Chinese people here. Like the fact that it happened over there. There's people who are that are Chinese here that have lived here for generations that just happen to be All Chinese, but they're yeah. Americans. Like it's so stupid. People just need to chill the fuck out. To, yeah, yeah. To, okay. they need to take a Papa Zanny or something. Damn, <laughs> uh, I can't take it. But it's, uh, but you know, back to the video, like I think he'll present more things. I think, but okay. um, yeah, but yeah. So, so let's finish or watch some more. That's a law that allows prisoners who believe they have unfairly long sentences to have their sentences reviewed. And since President Trump signed that act, one thousand people have benefited. Ninety percent have been black men. They've had their sentences reduced an average of almost 70 months. The Senate tonight taking bipartisan action on something substantial, overwhelmingly passing a major prison reform bill. The First Step Act eases federal sentencing for nonviolent offenders, aims to reduce repeat offending, and expands early release programs. Did he say bipartisan? Mr. President, thank you so much. It's almost hard for me to speak about this without being emotional. In the process of this, this has brought together friendships that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I'm now texting buddies with Van Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Van Whitelash Jones. How significant do you think this is? By the way, one of your partners in working on this yes. was Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner, whose, whose father went to prison and who, who fought mm -hmm. on this as hard as I this is history. This is history. Right now, you're witnessing history on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Mr. Purdue, for, it is a Mr. Christmas Purdue. miracle underway Why? where, for the first time in a generation, Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. are arm in arm tonight saying, we are sending too many people to prison. Mr. They're coming Moran. out bitter and not better. We want to make a tremendous difference. I want to mm -hmm. say uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, on the left, Jared Kushner, and Donald Trump on the right have brought together a coalition like I've never seen. And what about Trump's Music Modernization Act? Something that, again, President Obama didn't even do. President Donald Trump today moved the music industry into the 21st century. He signed the Music Modernization Act, legalizing the landmark copyright reform for songwriters. The goal is to ensure songwriters receive pay for the products that they produce when you're listening to them on streaming services. Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander championed that new law. He says the Music Modernization Act is the most important law in a generation to help make sure that our songwriters and singers all over America can keep working and making a decent living by ensuring they're paid when their songs are played. This is a great day for songwriters. It is. And, and artists. And artists. And artists. Okay. Yeah, don't start give it out the artists. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't, don't cheat don't, those artists. Don't cheat us. Oh, who, who benefits the most from the side? I'm saying as far as. I think both. That shirt both? Drives both. Me up yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I lean there. more to the the artists. Yeah. Because I'm a I'm a performer. You know. Got but uh, it helps <laughs> not style. just the writers but the singers. And not just black, but black, white, all oh, country, jazz, everything. So I'm very, I'm very impressed behind that. So it's a great thing what Trump is doing today. The it is, it is, it okay. is. And you know what? I told everybody, please, whatever your opinion or your decision, please, let's keep it signed. Let him sign it, please. Uh, look, today, today. Don't mess him up, please. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm really glad about all that. Right. Yeah. And then there is President Trump's support for school choice. The time has come to pass school choice for Americans' children. That's 
So on the campaign trail, Trump didn't talk much about K-12 policy, but he did, when he did, he talked about school choice. And Betsy DeVos is a longtime school choice advocate. Well, I believe that the family, that parents are the primary educator for their child or their children. And, uh, and we have, in, to a large extent, uh, removed a lot of that ability to direct and control by forcing way too many families to uh, assigned schools based on where they live. Now, choice in education is something that blacks and browns want. Guess who doesn't want it? White Dems, you know, who would never put their own kids in an urban school in a million years. Now, the proposal that I brought forth on education ends all private charter schools in this country. If That's I'm my president, daughter goes to. Betsy DeVos's whole notion from charter schools to this are gone. We're going we to we have the same choice that you make for your kids because mm -hmm. I read that your children went to private school. No, my children went to public school. But we, we, even if it was public school, it probably was the best public school. I can't Your pack up and say I'm leaving my apartment going to Germantown. That's our suburban. And then went to a private school. She's a liar. Wait, wait, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Point, that it. was that was the same chick who said she was Native American. Yeah, I know she's she not is. Native American at all. Yeah, uh, and it turns out that her um, her kids only went to like public school for like kindergarten or like grade school, like first grade or second grade or something, and then we're in private school the rest of the time. Yeah, and she's a fucking liar. See, my daughter goes to a charter school because I wouldn't send her to her home school for nothing. Like, nope. Yep. Well, the Democrats That's what I'm saying. So they away. would take that away. They mm -hmm. would take that choice away. She would have to go to the school you don't want her to go to. Yep. Yeah, yeah. She'd be yeah, no, school, school at that point. School choice would allow people to get their kids a better education. Like people who really want to see their kids succeed, who can't afford like actual private schools and stuff, but they would be able to like take them to a school a couple districts over that has a better education. Like we should just be improving all of our education across the board, honestly. But right. So that's what school choice would do, which is why I love that Trump supports that, because I think school choice would be important for it, it you know, giving uh, these young people a better opportunity at a much better future. There's a town, there's a town a couple, there's like about 15 minutes away from me. Okay, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind living there, but I would hate for my kids to go to that school district. I wouldn't mind living there just because it's cheaper to live yeah. there. But like, uh, the, I know why it's cheaper to live there, because nobody wants your kids to grow up there. You know, because of the school system. Yeah. Mm. But if that could get my daughter to come to this school district, that'd be great because I love this school district. But anyways. Okay. Because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. My daughter can't afford it. I understand. So we want to make what we got great, whether it's charter or traditional. And really, public schools are charter in yeah. where I come from. And we make parents know that they... Child schools are public schools mm -hmm. too. So let me just say, I appreciate nothing more than how much you care about your children and your grandchildren and get them educated. And that's all I want to do. If I don't have the pieces right, then I'll go back and read it. Go back and read it, I'll please. Go back and read it. And I promise you, I the promise next time you see me, if it's reading the way it's going to benefit well, our children. I'm not making promises. I'll go back and read it. I'll go read it. Sure well, just right. read it. That's okay. But it turns out that Senator Warren had a son in oh, private yeah. school from the fifth grade on. Oh, fifth grade on. There you go. He's the one who said it, I guess. <laughs> but let's move on. What about illegal immigration? And what does that have to do with blacks? Now we must implement an immigration system that will allow our citizens to prosper for generations to come. Today, we are presenting a clear contrast. Democrats are proposing open borders, lower wages, and frankly, lawless chaos. We are proposing an immigration plan that puts oh, the jobs, exactly like wages, and safety of American workers first. A steady stream of people showing up at the building behind me. We're told 150 applicants in the first three hours of this job fair with about 30 minutes left to go. 
Cook Foods has not said how many people they're looking to hire, but the folks that we spoke with said they're definitely ready to go to work. Uh, Cook is just one of several chicken processing companies to get raided by ICE agents last week with 680 workers detained for possible immigration violations. Peter Kirsten now is a friend I've known some 40 years. He's a longtime member of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Professor Briggs testified before the Civil Rights Commission. We had a whole host of people testifying before the Civil Rights Commission. The one cohort, the one demographic in the United States of America most harmed, most palpably harmed by illegal immigration are black Americans and Politicians, open borders politicians know this. They know this because there have been numerous hearings before Congress on this. I've testified in a number of these hearings. George Borjas has testified in a number of these hearings. Uh, Stephen Camerata has testified, and we've presented all of this evidence, all of this data, that the pernicious effect of illegal immigration of open borders has had on black Americans in terms of uh, employment. Nearly one million fewer blacks work today because of the competition from illegal immigration than otherwise would be the case if we had a secure face. border. And it also depresses wage rates by a tune of $1,800 like a year. George Borjas estimates that the depressive effects of illegal immigration on wages is anywhere from $99 billion to $118 billion annually, cumulatively, but it has the most significant effect on the black community. And did I mention Trump's expansion that of so-called enterprise zones that will thing. benefit the inner city? It's a big day. Yes, sir. Thank you. In a few moments, I will sign an executive order launching a new White House opportunity. This is a very big thing that Tim and I and everybody have been working on for a long time. And Revitalization Council. This council will coordinate efforts across the entire federal government to deliver jobs, investment, and growth to the communities that need it the most. And then there's the commutation of the sentence of Alice Johnson, given a long sentence for a non-violent an drug offense and the pardoning of Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion who was busted for a crime involving the transportation of a woman across state lines for purposes of sex. It was a BS charge just designed to nail him. And President Trump once again did something Obama did not do, and that is to pardon Jack Johnson. Wow. And he was our dead. A great-grandmother gets a anymore. second chance at freedom after President Trump commutes her life sentence. Alice Marie Johnson served 21 years for a nonviolent first-time drug charge, but a serious charge of drug trafficking and money laundering. Her story caught the eye of Kim Kardashian West, who made a personal plea for the release to President Trump last week. Johnson shared an emotional reunion with her family after walking out of an Alabama prison yesterday. They are the folks who had been lobbying uh, for this pardon uh, for, for years now. Johnson was the first African-American heavyweight champ. And in what was seen by many as a racial injustice, Johnson was convicted of a crime back in 1913. That crime was transporting a, a white woman across state lines. Uh, he died in 1946. Senator John McCain, former Senate Majority Leader uh, Harry Reid, had also been pushing Johnson's case for years. But again, President Trump has uh, posthumously uh, pardon Jack Johnson. And did I mention that Trump is upspending on historically black colleges and universities by 14%? Education has the power to uplift. It has the power to transform and perhaps most important, education has the power to create greater equality and justice in our lives. That's why today I'm thrilled to be signing an executive order to recognize the importance of historically black college and universities, very important. They have played such an important role in achieving progress for African Americans and in our nation's march for justice. HBCUs have been really pillars of the African American community for more than 150 years. Amazing job. And a grand and enduring symbol of America at its absolute best. And I congratulate you all to say that. Finally, a word or two about President Trump's support for law enforcement. Now, what does it have to do with black and brown people living in the inner city? Well, consider the Ferguson effect. That is what happens when officers are falsely accused of racism, as happened after Ferguson. Cops pull back and crime went up. And guess who got disproportionately hurt by that crime? Black and brown people. Well, the Ferguson effect is the twin phenomenon of officers backing off of proactive policing and the resulting increase in crime. Last year, we had the largest one-year increase in homicide in nearly 
a half century. The vast majority of the victims of that homicide increase have been black. The reason for this crime increase, I believe, is that officers are living today under a false and dangerous narrative that says that they are shot through with systemic racism, that we're living through an epidemic of racially biased police shootings, and that the type of proactive policing that I think is responsible for a 20-year crime decline that this nation has enjoyed uh, is under attack as racially oppressive. Bottom line, whether you're talking about the First Step Act, the Music Modernization Act, the tremendous economy that's benefiting black people, the fact that Donald Trump is doing something about illegal immigration, the fact that Donald Trump supports school choice, this man has got to be the worst racist ever. <laughs> I think white people that like black people, y'all should get some sort of wristband or hand snap or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. Something you can show in a dark alley to keep you from getting robbed. You know, you might not think that's a good idea, but you wish you had a wristband. You leave tonight and you're in that dark alley. Give me your money, white boy. Uh, uh, uh. Go ahead. Let her through, she got the wristband. Let her through, Chucky. So, where's Donald Trump's wristband? I'm Larry Elder, and this has been The Larry Elder Show. He said we're I'll Donald see you Trump's next time. Wristband. That's funny. So, um, I thought that some of the information was um, informative. However, I'm still stuck on like, so sometimes we do things because we have to, right? Like, is it, like, does it necessarily, like, to me, think that he's not a racist because he's done X, Y, Z? Like, that doesn't necessarily, there's just. So what, what qualifies as not being racist then exactly? Like, if actions well, don't, if, if well, actions speak louder than words, what what is louder than but, actions? But, but at the same time, sometimes it, you do actions to show face. So, and that, that's where I'm at. Like, because okay, he so has, then, so like, there's all these accusations that he's racist, right? That, that are out there, right? People spewing it all the time. So, <clears throat> are but they can't things, actually point to anything that he's done that's actually racist. That's what I'm, that's where I'm at. Like, that's where I'm like, okay, but when when we say that you know so and so said whatever but where is the actual like i need to see like so people like what people are accusing of i need to see it so i can interpret what mm -hmm. i think he meant does that make sense like i'm looking for something that like people are accusing this this is what was said and then i need to hear it well so when he said that some of the people like the immigrants when they were first like coming over the border that they were uh some of them were felons and like rape or rapists and murderers like right. they said that was racist okay and he said but and i assume some of the people are good but the fact is that these ms-13 guys are the ones who he was talking about who is a horrible lethal gang from mexico that were coming over across the border and literally committing crimes and we have seen a wave of crime with people like that but he wasn't saying that every single person coming over here was that people they What's just spin video, it to Belle? make them sound this one which one go up one more trump's attempt to gaslight black voters will you just send that to me in the discord yeah yeah i can send it to you um because i'm just curious what that what you know what it what it it's it, it entails yeah i'm just curious Right. Um, yeah, well, and I'm sure a lot of it is is going to be uh, some of the stuff we've already uh, talked about. But, yeah, see, uh, just like that one there, like the Trump racism through the decades. Like, I'm just curious. I just I just want to know. Well, I can tell you right now that one that thing that's shining right there, that's going to be the the five that I told you about the uh, Central Park five, which happened in New York mm -hmm. where he lives. Uh, and then, I mean, like. I guarantee you there's the thing about the the housing because mm -hmm. it's it's always the same things that they point to 
but all of those things have been like somewhat debunked. like some circumstance yeah debunked or like circumstantial right there's no actual like i mean he I mean, he, he 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 dated a black supermodel. I mean, she was a supermodel, but like, I mean, if he's really racist, he, that's a, going a long way. And that was back in like the '80s or '90s. So, and at, literally nobody thought he was racist. Everybody thought he was the nicest guy ever until he ran. So, why didn't everybody say he was racist beforehand? Right. That's what I want to know. Why did it only start? And he he was on. Why Oprah. did nobody? Well, he the View. Every single person on the View. Every one of those nasty women on the View loved his ass and were were charming him up when he would come on there and stuff not one of them thought he was racist then he they knew about all that stuff all this stuff has happened from years decades ago through the decades they knew about all that stuff they know about donald trump they lived with him he wasn't racist until he was president that's my problem right fair 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 so to me it's <laughs> like you either had a problem with it then or you or you don't actually have a problem with it now right or your brain was yeah so, well, it's just like, it's not like they didn't hear about all of that stuff. It was all over the news. He's a very, very wealthy man who comes from a very, very wealthy family. That stuff was plastered everywhere. Like, it's, right. there's no way people didn't already know about all of the stuff that they accuse him of. They were okay with it then. P rappers mm -hmm. were putting him in rap songs. He was in movies uh, like Home Alone 2 or whatever, Lost in New York. Uh, He's always been The he Simpsons. <laughs> Everybody, everybody loved Trump until he ran as a Republican. Right. And that's because he, that's the only place he could run. Like, you really only have a choice, red or blue. And blue is already taken, so he ran on the red team. He's always, he was a Democrat before that. He's always been a moderate. So my thing is, like, that's just why I don't buy into it. Like, because everything they say is circumstantial. I could see where maybe some people might get offended because, I don't know. People, it's some things are sensitive to say. It, it like people are almost scared to say the word black now because they're it's yeah. so stigmatized that they automatically assume racism when in conjunction with that but it's like sometimes you're literally just being specific about something like have you seen my friend i'm looking for him what does he look like if i just say oh he's got brown hair and brown eyes and he's real tall that could be anybody literally mm -hmm. so like sometimes it might like it's not always a negative it shouldn't always be a negative connotation just like when people say oh you know that white person or something like that i mean it's just well see for somebody that went to a predominantly black school like yeah. i have never been afraid to say like black or in a description like someone got into a fight i would be that one that i would be like oh it was the light-skinned black girl and the little skinny white girl and light skinned yeah. black girl had red braids and like I was right. never afraid. So saying, like, like you're you're that. not well, and that's just it is like you're literally not saying it maliciously. You're literally giving no. a description of what that person actually physically looks like. That's it. There's no maliciousness right. behind it. Like no, you know, it's just in like. I think you can tell when people are saying something to be very malicious and when they're not. And I mm -hmm. just do not get that vibe from Trump when he talks. Does he mm -hmm. say things kind of like, I'm like, you know, I wouldn't have worded it quite like that. that homie. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your speech writer, it either, if you're going off script, you need to stop. You shouldn't do that. Uh, because He's that's gotten what he better word. though. He's gotten a little bit better. I'm telling you they're drugging his ass. They gave him a Zanny. I know it. Uh, <laughs> they said, calm your ass down, sir. Here, smoke this joint. <laughs> Have a Kalana pen in a drink. Yeah, take the, <laughs> he's, he's been chilling with this Snoop back. Dogg. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Snoop is like, Trump, we got to settle your ass down. If we're going to do this, they we got to settle your they ass down. They have a Trump uh, cocktail now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so, but that would be my biggest thing is like, I would go back, go back and watch all the people that hate Trump that are on TV right now. Go back and look before he was president about how they talked about him and then tell me that shit ain't suspicious as fuck like he was just fine to be on everybody's best friend list until then money walks bullshit talks even if even if you didn't like him before like before he ran for president before people were talking about you said you like before the apprentice right how about how much racism did you hear about did you ever get no, the vibe I... from him that he was racist right you might no. just not like him right so that's what i'm saying is like so if it wasn't racist then, like when it happened before and everybody knew about it, how's it racist now? Right. So, yep. All right. Well, I will do Johnson. some research on my own too, just because I'm curious. Dude, the yeah, rabbit hole is so deep. 
I can't wait for we find something and you're like, that's the reason I don't like him because I'm I'm really curious why what it is that you don't. I mean, Dude. I can tell you that I don't like his cockiness, but I've gotten used to it because it's just really just his personality. That's just how he yeah. is. Yeah, well, I, I think a lot of it is arrogance. I think a lot of it is how he speaks. Um, I because uh, and this is long time. This goes mm-hmm. all the way back, right? Um, he 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 does carry himself with a, a bit of a, a lot of of, of arrogance. Yeah. yeah. He almost seems a little bit narcissistic to me. And like, mm-hmm. that's where like some of those things I, I have trouble, like getting past some of that. Like, I, I I think that overall, I'm like, I just never felt like he was a good person. Yeah, see, and so like, I that's where a like, lot of it like has to... guys, women going through different women. Do you know, well, I, 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 it's just really hard to like, okay. uh, you know, so there's one it. more, there's, there's one more video I posted and it's a shorter one, but it's a woman telling a story when you talk about not being a good person, like things that d- never saw the light of day that he did like behind the scenes that he did with, uh, he didn't do for publicity because nobody, not a lot of people know about it, but I, I put it in the discord. I it was it. right under that. Yeah. It's, it shouldn't be a very long video, but, but I think, I, was... I think with what we're talking about, I think this would be good for Carol to see. Well, what I was going to say real quick is that I think a lot of the arrogance and the way he carries himself has to do because he's in the spotlight all the time. Yeah. Well, it's like, I guess it's kind of yeah, a very but- alpha male type thing. But like when I think about dealing with more leaders who want to, you know, blow when us it up. When it comes to pre- ah, stop. I kind of like, I'm going to need him to be a little hardcore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, make I'm people talk- scared of us. I'm just talking about the arrogance that he portrays because I do understand yeah. what Carol's talking about on that because I've always like kind of like that's really cringy the way you're acting. Like, <laughs> like he yeah. rubs me well, wrong. Like he just I kind of think about it. Wrong. I kind of think about it in the essence of like imagine, imagine if he wasn't the president and he was a rapper. Mm-hmm. Okay. I and like <laughs> well, no, but like he's a lot of the time when he touts like all the great things he's done it's because he's like people talk so much shit about him and say that he didn't do those things that he wants to reiterate exactly what he did do because he never gets credit for it i'm just saying like if you kind of think about it in that sense like he's in trump mode oh god and i liked the remix coming at you i liked what his granddaughter said when she's like well he needs he goes the one thing he forgets though is i'm a trump too yeah, I like, love that. I'm sassy. Mm-hmm. I love um, it. Uh, well, you know, I just think that a lot of it, again, I think he just carried himself with just way, way too much arrogance. And I think that sometimes have. Trump, <clears throat> Trump needs to be humbled. Yeah, it you know, have. and I think that that's 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 my problem. He it, has this. Uh, it, it is enti- like people talk about entitlement. You know what I mean? But uh, you know, and I can see. Where some people might feel like that we're, it's it's leading to a dictatorship when it comes to Trump. Because he is very my way or the highway. He is very like, if I don't like whatever like you said or did and you're working for me, then you're fired. Well, like, you know, well, that's, that, that's, it's funny. It's funny you say that because I literally, do you know who Anna Kasparian is from the Young no, Turks? No, not. Have no. you heard of the Young Turks? Okay. Well, they no, are ma'am. very they're very anti-Trump. They're very liberal and they always, they have been. Um, and she literally just said in a video that, um, the thing about Trump is that he listens to his supporters when he was in, uh, when he was in office and he really wanted to go, like he wanted to attack Iran or go to war with Iran or something, something that Iran had done. He wanted to go and his supporters were like, no, we do not want war. We do not want war. We do not want to go. And he did not go. It was ser- uh, so and Anna Kasparian literally hates Trump. Like they are not Trump fans at all. But she's also fed up with a lot of the bullshit on the left. And she said she said that was the one thing that stood out to her was that the Trump supporters, like he listens to his supporters. So I think some of that is like See, I, I think- just think it's the way he's been portrayed on the media that makes people think he is like that. I'm not saying he's not complete. Well, he's he's not raised- like that. I'm saying I don't think he's as bad as people think Trump- he is. Trump was raised in the spotlight. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, he's been rich his whole life. His his family was real rich. That's what I'm thinking. Like, maybe it was just the way he was raised. Nice. It could have been just the way he was raised. And uh, because he does talk very proper, and sometimes that can come off as arrogant. Dude, the hand movements. Yeah. 
it is the best thing ever and we are gonna do it and it's amazing all the because time. if you I go feel back like it's almost a musical but conductor. if you go back and you watch like you know like queen elizabeth and like the the royal family they're very prim and proper <laughs> and they come off arrogant to me as well does it you know what i mean because he talk he talks like this <laughs> yeah i mean yeah let's watch this let, let's watch let's watch let's watch let's see <laughs> okay Let's watch this. I'm oh, sorry, I'm busy watching Lacey right now. When it comes to President Donald Trump, I want to say this because a lot of people accuse this man of being a racist. And I just want to say that I met President Donald Trump working on criminal justice reform. I too was one of the ones that said, no, I don't want to go talk to that man. I don't know him. He, he hates black people. Well, that's what they said. And so they said, well, Angela, he's working on criminal justice reform. You have a story. Many of you may or may not know that I served time in a Georgia state prison. And while I was serving time in that prison, I was pregnant. And when it was time for me to deliver my baby, I was transported oh, I to a hospital story. here in Georgia by a police officer. And I was chained to a bed and I was forced to give birth to my baby with a sheriff watching for a nonviolent crime. Also separated from my family for a nonviolent crime. But you know, the Democrats say we only supposed to fight for the family separation at the border. They forgot all about the family separation in the border. They want Trump to apologize for the CP5, but they ain't demanded that Joe Biden apologize for the 94 crime bill. But that's something else. I had a story. They told me that this man was a racist, but I had a story. And I knew that if I could use my story to convince this man that there was a need to reform our criminal justice system, then I would do that. I wasn't gonna be worried about emotions. I wasn't gonna be worried about the media. I wasn't going to worry about the naysayers. I was gonna go in with my story and see if I could make a difference. I found myself sitting in front of President Trump in the Oval Office and I shared my story. This is the man that they told me was a racist. I don't know, I'm scared to death. Right, is he gonna hang me? I don't know, is he gonna call the KKK the way that the media has portrayed it? I'm in a danger zone. Just so happened that he heard my story. Not only did he pass the First Step Act, but he also made it illegal for them to chain women to the bed during their childbirth. That's Terrence Williams. This white man that they told me was a racist. They told me he hated black people. So not only did he just sign one of the most historic forms of criminal justice reform legislation to ever hit this nation, overturning the 94 crime bill that massively incarcerated black America, freeing nearly 20,000 people to this day. The First Step Act. I sat in the Oval Office with a lot of criminal justice reform advocates. I saw Kim Kardashian on the front page taking her pictures. I saw Alice Johnson. I saw Louis, uh, Louis Reed. I saw Van Jones. I saw Jessica Jackson. I saw, uh, what's her name? Vivica Fox. I saw Isaiah Washington. But I don't see any of them here today. A lot of people want to take a lot of credit for being criminal justice reform experts criminal justice reform advocates, but to tell the truth, you didn't free nobody, Trump did. Kim Kardashian had the nerve to put up a tweet to say free Gunna. Gunna is a YSL rapper tied to the Young Thug case, charged with Rico, the same DA, the same charges. You put up a tweet and say free a known gangster in Atlanta, Georgia, but you won't put up a tweet and say free President Trump. And the only reason you getting any credit for freeing anybody is because President Donald J. Trump signed the papers. As a criminal justice reform advocate, somebody that's grateful to President Donald Trump for giving me a second chance, giving me an opportunity to run for Congress by clearing my record. Somebody who was completely oblivious to the corruption that happens in Atlanta, Georgia. I just wanted to do something for my community. I refuse to be silent. Not only will I stand for Atlanta, Georgia, not only will I stand for America, 
Not only will I stand for the babies being aborted in the womb, not only will I stand for the mothers that choose life, I'm also gonna stand with President Donald Trump. How beautiful, man. God bless this lady. Her speech was a bit longer, so I made sure to put the video link in the description so you can go and watch it, listen to it. I'm gonna leave you with this picture. I choose this picture because the lady in the video, Angela, she's right here behind, she's right there. And in this picture, you can see Donald Trump with uh, African-American supporters. The media, the fake news media, MSNBC, CNN, and whatever, they want you to believe that this man right here in the middle hates black people. You, you cannot make this up, bro. You have all these black people here praying with this man, praying for him, but the media wants you to believe that this man is racist. How crazy is that? You let me know what you think about this in the comment section and um, God bless you. God bless your family. Catch you on the next one. Trump 2024, bro. Hmm. She's yeah, very good speaker. Very well. Oh, she's amazing. Uh, I want to be that, like, <laughs> Right. I can't imagine she brought me like, tears. being like, I'm chained. Over here fight back. <laughs> being chained to a bed while you're trying to give birth. Like, I've never given birth, but like, I'm, it's like the most painful thing you could go through. Like, it's, crazy uh that that they would do that to a human being right like it's disgusting but i'm glad that that is no longer able to be done to people because i don't there's very few cases i can tell you there. one thing that got yeah. trump back into my good graces a bit yeah the one thing that sticks out in my head when he was in <laughs> office that he did oh, yeah office, that, okay yeah, when he was in office that he did, that I was absolutely like, hell yeah, thank you, Donald Trump, is he got rid of the Obama, what was that, call it? Oh, like you had, yeah, you had to get, yeah, yeah, you had to uh, I was like, so you're going, if you didn't have health insurance. Right, you're punishing the people that already don't have money to have health insurance to pay more money. Yeah. What? And what they're like, it's more affordable. That? And I'm like, more affordable for who? You know what, though? So, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a story about that. So I was getting penalized for it because I didn't have health insurance. And I tried to call and call and call. I couldn't get a hold of nobody. Nobody would call me back. I tried for three years that Obama was in office to get that, or the first three years that he was that he had that, that he, he passed that law, you know? That first three yeah. years of it, I called and called and called almost daily and could not get nobody to answer me. I couldn't. And I heard many stories like that. That's crazy. Well, <laughs> you know, and then there's something else that Trump did that I also appreciated. So we're going to take away some of the things that, you know, before we end this video, you know, I, I don't like the guy. I talk a lot of negative about the guy or I always want to find the negative. We talked yeah. about that in a previous video. I will watch things looking for something I can dislike, right? That's what yeah. I that's what I do when it comes to Trump. But he I think also most of us do that when like I can say I I do that with with people or things that I definitely don't like either. Right. So you're not yeah. alone in that. That's Same. just it's how it's, it's, human. it's human nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just human nature. So, but another thing that he did was make animal abuse a federal crime. Yeah. And that's good. um, you know, and Yes. And so, and cause I mean, and I think that's because it goes back to when I was younger, I literally had my husband and I had a dog that we rescued, um, yeah. from a pit bull fighting ring and the, the dog was used as a mm. bait dog. Mm. So um, oh. you know, she was chewed up. She had, she had scars all down her legs. She had no ears. Um, you know, cause they literally cut them all the way down the term because they were ripped off. Like, mm. um, oh. so like, so when I think about like what that dog went through and like, yeah. look, you know, kind of be cautious of different things and learning, we have this pit bull that was used in this yeah. as a big dog. Like it's horrible that that shit happened. So, you know, I think about those things. And so I'm like, you know, thank God for that. Right. So now if someone's caught with that, it's a fucking, it, it, you know, it's a felony charge against you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, you know, I just, I, I'm glad that it's a, it's a felony crime. I think I said federal earlier, but I meant felony, but it's yeah. a felony crime. I knew what you meant. Yeah. 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 Uh, That's all I got for today. Yeah. Maybe we'll learn no, some well, more. Pluck away. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for, for sure. joining our TED talk. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Political TED Talk here. Uh, but yeah, so maybe just a little bit to balance some of the negative stuff. Like, right. I'm not saying all the negative stuff is, you know, it ha- is completely a lie because I, don't, I can't say that definitively, but I can say a lot of what I've found that people said, you know, he said this, and then I would watch the actual, like the full length clip unedited and it, it was way out of context or it was completely like, they just left off the part where he like would have negated everything they just said. So yeah. Like, okay. When we, but. um. Uh, the day the day of the shooting, you, you you ladies, I shared it with y'all about that girl that, that was on Facebook and was telling me that, well, she didn't tell me. She said on one of my friends' posts that, uh, that oh, well, they shouldn't have missed or something like that. Well, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. terrible. Right. And whenever I told her, uh, I was like, I, so I told her that she's what's wrong with this world that because you shouldn't wish death on anybody. And he goes, but he's killed right. over a million people. Where? Who? Who? Yeah. yeah, she I mean, said Trump killed over a million people. I was like, what? Who? I even call bullshit on that. Like, yeah. I, I don't even like Trump. And I'm like, what? And that's makes Dude, me wonder was she, getting, that was she getting it confused with Hillary Clinton's emails? Oh, maybe. Nah. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Who anyway, knows? I ended up blocking but... her before I could even ask her that because, I mean, <laughs> it was getting ridiculous the whole back and yeah. forth. And it wasn't doing no good, so. That's crazy. Uh, all right, People ladies. Are wild. Well, I think that that's going to wrap us up for today. Um, you guys, if you have any good comments that you can leave or educational comments for me or a good video I yeah. should go check out, drop it down in the comments. I, I you know, I'm literally trying, you know, to, uh, I'm trying to make my own decision, guys. So don't try to like press me one way or another, right? Yeah. Like just, just give me your information. And then I can look at it, you know, yeah, yeah. the girls have been really good about just give me the information right? and let me absorb it, you know, cause it's yeah. an all learning process for me. I'm not going to pretend that I'm some great political speaker. And then I know all, and you know, my brain is just full of all this information. It's not, it's empty when it comes to this kind of stuff, guys, I'm trying to fill it up, but right now it's empty. You want to ask me about medical billing? I got you. And, and, on, that, any of and on that, and on that, but on that note, though, I just want to point out, uh, y'all, uh, there's a few people who think that we're just a strictly a music reaction channel when we're not. We never declared to be that. Uh, we started this channel for us to do whatever we want it to do. And um, part of it is educating each other on things that we're not educated on that maybe one of the other ones are. And this happens to be yeah. one of the topics. So, right. It's called, and, you know, Betty podcast, Betty podcast for a reason. Yeah, for, I was for a reason, guys. We actually that started left it this open for us to be whatever, it open we, for whatever us. we want it. Yes, mm-hmm. to cover in, to cover stuff, stuff that happens in our lives, stuff that happens in the world, whatever we deem and entertaining or interesting. It's not to like us I didn't moment. make a uh, community post explaining that we were revamping the channel, and we want to be more podcasty. So you, yeah. we're going to still do some music, but we're going to be more podcasty. Yeah. Right. I mean, let Ren or, you know, uh, Tom or, you know, Ronnie Radke, any of those that we that are real favorites yeah. of ours drop something, uh, we'll, we'll be, be all it. over that. All oh, yeah. You know, well, it's, it's like, but, if you look at, like, Cartier Family does it, LFR does it, uh, a lot of them, uh, even uh, Officer Tatum will do it. They react to some of the music that they like that falls in line with kind of, like, well, for them, like, whatever is going on in their life with, like, with Tom and stuff, but, you know. They do other things too. Yeah, right. I mean, we're not forcing you to watch it. <laughs> right. Yeah. If it's not for you and you don't want to care to watch that video, that's fine. But you don't need to threaten to unsubscribe or whatever. Just it do is. it don't or like, don't. Just yeah. You know, I don't if, care. If, 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 if <laughs> I mean, don't, I care, but I don't. I, you know, yeah. Unsubscribe and uh, you know, no feelings lost, no love lost. Just do what you feel is right for you, and yeah. we're gonna do what we feel is right for us. Absolutely. So yeah. on that note, guys, like, comment subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified and uh, we'll catch you later.